Things happen in life, you don't know why, and you only get to look at them in retrospect a long time later. But all of that stuff, you know, made me what I am today, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and, and I wouldn't change a thing. What will happen if you're successful? And you won't see it coming. You'll wake up one day and say, oh my goodness, I, I'm wealthy beyond my wildest dreams. You'll probably go right back to work, but the point is you created something of tremendous value. And the way it manifests itself to you later in life is it, it gives you freedom to do whatever you want. My number one message to entrepreneurs and I teach today is never pursue entrepreneurship for the greed of money. It has nothing to do with it at all. The whole reason to be an entrepreneur is the pursuit of freedom. That's why you do it. You do it because you want to be free one day to do whatever you like. Some people are just so laser focused on their career. They work 70 hours a week and they're always on the grind and they don't have any time for any leisure activity or family or anything that's not work. And that is an incredibly hard situation to be in. Now, most of the time when you're talking about having a healthy life and enjoying life to the fullest, that is not a good example of it. Just constantly working. You need a break and that's okay. You're going to want to spread your life out. You don't want to put all your eggs in the one basket of being a workaholic. You're going to want to ahead and spread it out. Go ahead and work. Work hard. Work a lot. That's fine. But you're going to need some time for some leisure activities. Get your mind focused and reset. Go ahead and hang out with your pals, your buddies, your friends. Go ahead and settle down with the family if that's what you want to do. But make sure you have numerous activities to do instead of solely focusing on your work. You just can't let your pride get in the way. It's okay not to be solely exceptional on one thing and be okay at a whole bunch of others. There's nothing wrong with that. You can choose to be exceptionally incredible at one object, but the rest of your life won't be as exciting, opposed to spreading it out and doing various different activities throughout your life and enjoying life and everything that it has to offer to its maximum potential. So I went to Kurt, the FTSE Russell guys and said, look, my rules are simple. Can you give me a new index that meets my 5% market cap weighting, 20% in sector, but above all, lower of all, and I want 50% more yield from the index than the generic index. Can you design something like that for me? I have a fair amount of capital put to work. I thought that these rules would be, inter be of interest to other investors. That was the genesis of O-Shares. We created something new for the ETF market. It's a new generation. You don't know these things are happening to you, but they are for a reason, and it's made me a relatively successful international investor because I was able to see trends. I mean, I lived in Cambodia. I saw when the French and Germans were going into real estate there to follow them in. I knew exactly what the industries were in Ethiopia and, and what you should invest in. Cyprus, I already saw the banking system and the oil business growing there, and I was an investor there. So there's all kinds of, of cues you get from your youth that you should really apply to your business later. And that was a remarkable experience, and certainly he was a major influence in my life. I thought I'd go to the ETF market to solve for it, and I found out something very interesting that I think others have found out recently as well. The first generation of ETFs are market cap weighted indices. So over time, when companies grow their market cap, they become an inordinately large piece of the index. And if I have a covenant of 5% market cap weight in any one name, most of these ETFs I can't use because you get four or five names represent 40, 50, 60% of the index. I'd rather own a service provider that mines copper or provides utilities to the copper mine that pays me a dividend. I'd rather, rather own a pipeline than the oil that flows in it. Because commodities have this nasty habit of being very volatile and they don't pay you to wait. Where's my cash? Where's my check every month? I don't want to speculate on what copper is going to be worth next week. I'd rather own a company that's providing high pressure trucks to copper mines that sends me a 5.5% dividend. And I do own that company. I get paid every single quarter. Cash, 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 cash. That makes me feel warm and fuzzy. That journey is remarkably challenging. It's not easy, but the outcomes are fantastic. When you see a business explode, going from zero sales to 10 million after two years, you know you got a hit on your hands. And yet if you ask that entrepreneur, was it easy? Every one of them will say, this is tough. It is tough. So I tell people that are listening, get ready for a wild ride, but don't ever think it's easy. In my lifetime, which I hope is a lot of years left, we will see the Chinese yuan take over. I just look at my investments in that country, they're volatile, but the performance and the growth metrics are fantastic.
fantastic. I can sense the cash moving out of North America. Old and fat and slow growth. We're the Romans now. And then I look at where I'm making all my money. It's all happening in Brazil, India, China. So scale, the Chinese economy is going to overtake North America during my life.